Sydney, the Harbour City, where there's so much to do. Oh, a little bit of a touch. Look at the big deep break. Fires off as well. You can cruise around. It's like an expression session. Enjoy the history. Marcus Ambrose celebrates oh, his second consecutive That's championship oh, victory. God. Cool off in the water. That's wild. Trying to pour some moisture out of the grass. Wow. <laughs> Get off the beaten track. And he's deep, deep into the wall. Try and avoid the traffic. Push and shove through the right-hander and three. That's a little rough up between the teammates. So you can catch up with old mates. Escape into the wall. He had some issue with Russell Ingall, I wonder. It's the Red Rooster Sydney Super Sprint. We're racing in Sydney this weekend and very much looking forward to the ninth instalment of the Virgin Australia Supercars Championship, the Red Rooster Sydney Super Sprint. As we welcome you this afternoon, we are 40 kilometres west of the Opera House and the Sydney CBD, that beautiful harbour bridge and wonderful Sydney harbour for our 17th and 18th races of the championship. Fortunately, the wind has calmed down a little this afternoon. It's moved further to the south. It's down around 15 kilometres an hour and we're looking forward to a great Super Sprint race this afternoon. 120 kilometres of racing to come from Sydney Motorsport Park and we've reached our expected top temperature. It's pretty breezy out there at the moment. Let's analyse a little bit more about this racetrack. First came here back in 1990. Larry Perkins and Thomas Mazira winning in their Holden Commodore and this weekend represents races 51 and 52 for our visits to this very popular location with the drivers. Highly complex racetrack this one with a top speed of 270 kilometres an hour and an average speed just on 160 kilometres an hour or the old 100 mile an hour mark. And it's all about the turn around here because you spend a huge proportion of the lap changing direction of the car, trying to figure out how to pull it up straight. There are passing opportunities. It's going to be all about strategy and pace this afternoon because in particular, it hurts tyres, this racetrack. The punishment for the brakes is low. The bump rating is medium. The tyre wear is very, very high, and that means there's an opportunity to roll the strategic dice in order to be able to get the job done. Let's have a look back at Queensland at Raceway, the Coates High Ipswich Super Sprint. What a busy weekend it was. We saw some fantastic racing there. Shoulder to shoulder battle and some great performances. And in the end, on the Saturday, it was Scott McLaughlin that grabbed the 150 primo points for the job. And then on Sunday, after a rocket start from the line, converting beautifully, Chaz Mostert made it a second victory in 2017. A fine performance for him, and it put everybody at ProDrive and Super Chief back on the map. And as a consequence, we've got a great championship battle going where there's 129 points at the moment between Scotty McLaughlin and Jamie Wincup. Here's the point scenario. Wincup, Coulthard, Van Gisbergen, followed by Mostert, Winterbottom, Lowndes, Reynolds, Tander and Cam Waters. And in the case of David Reynolds and Garth Tander, they flipped around in their positions in that top 10 battle. 1,800 points available between now and the last lap of racing on Sunday afternoon at Newcastle. So there's a lot to play for with our final sprint race this weekend before the Pertec Enduro Cup. Fabian Coulthard. <laughs> having a little joke there. It's turning into quite a delightful afternoon, but I don't know how long that's going to last for for this, uh, this race this afternoon. Yeah, I think um, it's wind's going to stay here. It's been here all weekend, so the weather's not bad. Blue skies, it's freezing, it's windy, but apart from that, it looks the part. How much is this bright sun going to affect you guys heading down into turn one, do you think, as the race progresses on? I think it'll get progressively worse. Um, that's just the nature of the sun dropping, but... Um, run the visor down. Hopefully we've got enough window tent on the front and it should be okay. But we've done a few late races um, throughout the championship already, so hopefully it won't be any worse than what we've had. Two cars in the top four for you guys, the Shell V-Power team. Qualifying performance was strong. Yeah, it's been really good. So, uh, you know, congrats to Scotty for wrapping up the Armourall Pole Award. That's uh, pretty impressive on his part. Um, but, yeah, to have two in the top four, it's a credit to everyone at Shell V-Power Racing. They're the ones that are giving us good, fast cars. Hopefully we can do the goods with it this afternoon. Yeah, good luck. All right, cheers. Looking very relaxed here, James Moffat. Got a new foot wrist, I see. I do. The, the guys have uh, done a good job with this leg protection system. So not only do I feel nice and safe in the car now, I've got a 
nice little spot to hang your leg up before the race. Now you've just got to uh, work out how to get this car further forward. You and GT look like you are having a bit of a struggle. If you've got any tips, Gregory, I'm more than happy to take them on board from uh, <laughs> an experienced veteran like yourself. But uh, You've seen me race, James. I don't know if I, you want any too many tips. Well, I have seen you race, but... <laughs> Yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty bad at the moment. We're, we're sh definitely struggling for speed and for whatever reason at this style of circuit, um, we just can't can't find what we need out of the car to be further up the grid. So um, we'll do our best in the race and hopefully stay out of trouble and uh, pick up some points at least. Thanks, buddy. Thanks, Greg. Lots of fans around car 888 for Craig Lowndes. I'm probably going to get in big trouble here because I'm jumping the queue a little bit. I'm sorry about that. Hey, grid position 10, you know this place so well. I've got great memories of just over 20 years ago here for you. What can you do this afternoon? Is it a good race car? Uh, well, we believe it's a good race car. I think the tyre deg will be pretty high. I think that uh, we did a run um, practice one yesterday and uh, we sort of really blew it out, which was, was sort of surprising for us. But uh, look, you know, we've made some adjustments since then. We probably weren't, like everyone will say, we're not 100% happy with qualifying, but we're making progress in that area. But uh, we, yeah, we believe we've got a good race car. I reckon that was evident at Queensland Raceway that you took a step forward there. And even though you're on the fifth row, you're only a couple of tenths off Jamie Wincup on, on row three. So it is so tight, this game, isn't it? Well, it is. And it's one of those things, Rusty, that uh, you make a little mistake or you run a little bit wide. You know, you, you're furious with yourself and you try and make it up the next corner and then you make another mistake. And of course, you find yourself back in 20th where I have been. So, um, yes, we have been making some good inroads in that side of it. And, uh, you know, we, you know, 30 odd laps around here are going to be pretty tough. Right, you've got a lot of fans here, so I'm going to get out of here. Enjoy. Cheers. Cheers, thanks. thanks. Scott McLaughlin, we had a chat to you after qualifying. It was a wonderful result for you. It was DJR team, or DJR's 70th championship pole. Another record for you. Six pole positions in a row. Now, I'm going to rattle off some names. Johnson, Brock, Moffat, and now McLaughlin are the only guys who have done that. That's, that's cool. That's... Uh... Probably not the, the thing I want to hear before I go out on the race because I'm getting even more nervous. But uh, no, it's, you know, I'm very lucky I've got a great team behind me. And I always say it, but it's true. You know, everyone at Shell V Power Racing, me and Fabs are the figureheads of the team. But at the end of the day, you know, we, we've got a great team, not only here, but at the shop who work tremendously hard for us and give us great cars. And to turn around what was last year to this year um, is a testament to them. So all the praise goes to them and hopefully uh, we can do the job in this race. Now you just have a you know, quick... Uh briefing with Ludo before this race gets underway. What sort of things were you guys discussing? I know you're not going to give away any, anyway, any nah, secrets. No, nah, nah, not at all, but no, nah, it's just, just like, you know, points and, and just think about things and, 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 and just, you know, be, be, be careful. And, and at the end of the day, it's, it's the same pep talk we always have. Um, half of it I understand, half of it I don't, and we, we, we move on. <laughs> Thanks, Scotty. Cheers. Good luck. Thanks. Rick Kelly, tell me what you're going to do, mate. What are you going to do here? I need to know your strategy for this race because you, you haven't done a good enough job in qualifying, I'm afraid. <laughs> that's a good way to put it. That's, <laughs> but that, that's the fact. We're a long way back. I tell you, to move forward, you need to have better pace than everyone else. Degradation's a, a massive thing here. So just all we can do is try and offset ourselves from uh, everyone else's strategy and try and move forward. But like I say, from here with the pace we've shown this weekend, it's going to be it's going to be a tough day probably. You've got uh, Garth Anderson in next year as well. He's uh, probably feeling the same way. But um, the, you two tend to have pretty good starts. and. He tends to make a few spots up. Who's going to follow who? I'm going to follow him for this because by turn two of his history, he'll be about 10th from 18th. So we'll see how he goes. But, yeah, I mean, if we're going to make the tyres last, you just can't go too crazy in those first couple of laps because the tyres take a significant step down. So um, through, the, through the chaos, like I say, lap one, lap two, my strategy will be to try and take it easy and look after him so that if we need to go long on the first set, we can do it. OK, thanks, mate. Thank you. Row six is where we find the Monster Energy Ford from Pro Drive Racing Australia. Cameron Waters, you've had a very consistent year. What's the play this afternoon here at City Motorsport Park? Yeah, just um, yeah, tyre lice all about today. So if we can get an OK start, look after the tyres and then hopefully move forward during the race. But um, yeah, made a bit of a mistake on my lap, which I was a bit of a uh, bit buggered at. But um, yeah, just got the curb strike at turn five. So. That's okay. I think we've got a pretty good car. We'll just um, try and move forward a little bit. You share the garage there with Frosty. Have you drawn him? I mean, he's on the front row. He's clearly pumped about that. Have you got a similar setup in this car? Yeah, we're all actually pretty similar this weekend, which is quite nice. And we can kind of um, build on each other's um, setups and what we're all doing. So I was on for the same first sector as um, Frosty and then, yeah, got the curve five strike. So, um, yeah, we'll, we're looking okay. Um, yeah, obviously didn't put it together. But, yeah, we've got a quick race car, so hopefully we can move forward. Are you going to send Mum and Dad a quick cheerio? Because I think they're... Where are they? They're in America watching, aren't they? Is it really? Yeah, I think Mum and Dad are in San Diego. So, um, yeah, I'm not sure what the time is over there. It's probably <laughs> one in the morning. But, yeah, hi, Mum and Dad, if you're watching. Cool. Cheers. Good luck. Thanks, Anne.
Mark Winterbottom, you've got plenty of fans just in front of us here sitting on the um, pit wall. Brilliant result in qualifying to be on the front row for this race. Yeah, it was good. The, um, the car's been good all weekend and it's sort of a new philosophy type thing that we've had on my car and it's just making sense which is really nice and um, yeah for the race it's going to be the first I guess the first test or the second test because we've, we've done it over one lap it feels good I think it'll hold on to its tyres but until you get out there and start burning around that's probably the next the next challenge but um, yeah to get on the front row at a home race um, and turn our season around it's, it's been tough so um, front row is a great result and we can race from there so we'll see what what the afternoon brings. I'm not going to say it was me but I did wear green socks today um, so just just you know I don't know yeah we will comment on it to be honest so um, I've noticed and uh, it's fixed all my understeer so well. I really appreciate it and if you can wear them for the rest of the year <laughs> that'd be nice but um, I'm wearing my fireproof ones they're white available at Revolution Race Gear so uh, <laughs> I've worn them all year they haven't helped me but anyway we'll go racing soon everyone's putting the helmet on we should get serious and, uh, and have a crack we'll get serious good luck cheers Tom thanks boys well, Simona Di Silvestro, how, how are you handling this uh, very low grip surface here at Eastern Creek, trying to get used to it? We know we've been talking to you and your engineer, finding out about your style and the way you've been attacking some of these corners. It's, it's a difficult thing to change, and here with the, the lack of grip, it must be even a little bit more difficult. Yeah, it's quite tricky when you run on old tyres and then all of a sudden you put new tyres on because it's such a big gap, you know, it's almost like, th like two seconds. So it's a, uh, a bit tricky out there and I think the, the race is going to be interesting as well, you know, not, I haven't done that many tyre deck races, you know, we've done Perth and stuff like that. We, uh, you learned a little bit, but hopefully this time it's going to go a little bit better. Yeah, you, do, you did something a little bit different the other night. You did a bit of a, a night test here at uh, Sydney Motorsport Park. Uh, that would have been a bit of a different experience. Yeah, definitely. It was uh, it was quite okay where it was lit up, but then in the back there where there wasn't any lights it was quite tricky. But I think it'd, it'd be quite cool if uh, we get the lighting correct. It'd be it'd be quite fun to do. Well, good luck today. Uh, starting from 21 on the grid, there's a bit of a downhill run down to turn one. Have a good one. Thank you. We're likely in for a great show this afternoon, race number 17 of the championship, because strategy is going to be a big story in this race. Let's look at our basics inside the Hino Hub. For race number 17 of the championship, it's a short race today, 120 kilometres, 31 laps, or if we don't make it, 27 minutes past 5 o'clock local. For a little more than 100 litres of shell racing fuel, the rules require that you must change a minimum of two tyres, lap 5 or after. Tank capacity 110 litres, so there's no issue with fuel in this race today. That's your burn. Here's your starting fuel. Now, you could run lighter if you thought that lighter would give you a performance advantage, but a lot of people are not bothering with fuel in these races so far this year. And here's our range, which is more relevant for tomorrow. Now, the considerations, this place, as we've been talking through the weekend, really punishes those Dunlop tyres. So this means that the undercut is on. If you get on to a fresh young tyre at just the right time, there's a good yield to be had. Something to understand here, every eight laps based on last year's data, you will lose a second of lap time. So stop and think about that. That makes you two to three seconds a lap slower near the back end of the race. And we know that, for example, if you stop for two tyres, you save a little bit of time in the pit lane. The problem is there's not as much grip available, so four tyres gives you more grip. These are all the things you've got to balance. It's a fairly decent transit time down the pit lane, and the probability of the safety car here is medium at 50%. Fuel's not a factor, but pit stops are, because you've got to stop and grab those tyres. This is what the alternate strategy looks like. Fuel on one side, laps on the other. If you did this, you'd be a brave boy or girl, because you're going to have a huge run to the end and very ordinary tyres at the other end. Here is the standard strategy, stopping at around about lap 13. But going back to 2016, the corresponding race, splitting it in half was about the go. Now, by comparison, last year's race winner, Shane Van Gisbergen, pitted on lap 14, so he basically came in right in the middle here. And the guy that he was battling, his teammate, Jamie Wincup, came in three laps later. And when they got down to this end of the wedge, there was just two tenths of a second between them. Now, this thing is very busy at this racetrack, the steering wheel. And here's why, because 84% of this lap, you're doing this. That's why the tyres take a punish. So you only get zero steering angle time for a little over 14 seconds. You spend 75 seconds in 90 seconds punishing those tyres. That's the big story of the weekend, which is why that previous graph and how you use your tyres is going to be key. If it's anything like last year's race, this is going to be an absolute cracker.
It was a brilliant job by Tim Slade and the Brad Jones team in qualifying to be on the third row. This is also the final event in the Pertec Pit Stop Challenge. The final qualifying round, I should say. Tim's crew leads on 95 points, five clear of the Shell V Power Racing entry of Fabian Coulthard. Then it's a bit of a gap back to Michael Caruso on 75. The team of Nick Perkat, the sister car at Brad Jones Racing, the AC Delco entry on 71, just one clear of Mark Winterbottom. Only the top four from this afternoon's race will advance to the grand final at Bathurst. You're in good shape for that 25 grand prize money, this crew, aren't they? Yeah, the boys have done an amazing job. Um, Wally Story leads them back in the workshop and they obviously do plenty of practice at the track as well. So we won't talk them up too much uh, just at this stage, otherwise we'll put the mocker on them. So um, yeah, we'll get through today, but uh, yeah, the boys have done a really great job all year and um, be awesome for to be uh, duking it out at Bathurst. Go and do that race driver stuff. Thank you. <laughs> Shane Van Gisbergen, it appeared like your car was a little bit more of a handful in the earlier phase of this weekend, but things seem to have turned around in qualifying. Did it look bad? It just looked exciting from our side. Oh, no, it's all good. Just trying stuff, trying stuff. But, yeah, in and amongst it, P3. Hopefully we can have a shot here, get a good start and get amongst these guys. How much do you think this sun is going to affect um, the end of, later part of this race? Uh, the sun? No, it's the least of our issues. But, um, yeah, it's all good. Um, it's going to be all about tyres, just when to pit, how aggressive you want to be, or do the opposite, come home strong. So we have a small plan, but that normally changes, doesn't it? So, yeah, we'll see. Good luck. Thanks. And the Boost Mobile Entry, James Courtney, starts 15th. Uh, mate, uh, strategy-wise, is it a moving target for you guys on when you are going to pit? Yeah, that's it, Murph. So uh, tyre deck's huge here. So, uh, yeah, we're going to probably be watching a little bit. We'll probably uh, jump pretty early. Uh, just to try and get some track position back. Uh, but, yeah, look, it's uh, it's going to be a long one. Ty Degg's just going to be a killer for the strategist this weekend. It's a, I mean, you guys have been working way hard. It looks like uh, your teammates uh, had a, a little bit more joy with his, his car this weekend. Yeah, that's it, mate. It's uh, It's been it's been better, really, um, going from the 20. We're 15. Scotty got a good lap in and he got ninth. So uh, had a look at what he did with his car and how different it was, and we're probably matching the cars up quite quite closely now, so uh, see how we go in the race, back. Good luck, bud. Cheers, pal. With the winner of race six of the season at Phillip Island and also in Queensland last time out, Chas Moss, that got a funny little message from you on Instagram before. It was a little bit of a giggle, but time to, to get serious now. How are you looking for this one out of position seven? Well, first of all, Rusty, you're normally tagging all of us, so it was about time <laughs> someone tagged you back. But, um, yeah, probably a little bit further back than what we'd like. Uh, probably would like to be two rows further forward around this place, but... Just, uh, just struggle for the balance a little bit in qualifying. So at least we get another crack at it again tomorrow. But it's just so tight out here at the moment. So hopefully we've got a good race car. We'll try to, to do what we did at Queensland Raceway. The car was pretty good in the race there. So fingers crossed we can uh, run with the top six guys and then see what, uh, what happens with strategy. Got the eyes on. Go get them. Let's have a look at some of the wonderful moments at this racetrack over the years. We've been coming here for a long time successfully now. Marcus Ambrose, championship victories back in 2003 and 2004. Stone Brothers Racing, big reaction from the Ford fans. This is one that's kept us talking forever and ever and ever. Sure. Scape versus Ingle. And he's trying to knuckle me. In fact, that's what's going on out there now in the commentary box. They're lovers now. Scaife beating Brock's record in 2007. So that was another very big and poignant moment in the championship as well. 2016, Shane Van Gisbergen picking up a victory here. Nice job in the Red Bull Holden Commodore. What a great season he had last year. Still well and truly in the hunt. And Jamie Wincup, 100 race wins Sunday 2016. And he's potentially on the verge of something big every time we go racing at the moment because he and Craig Lowndes battling for the most number of victories ever in this category of motorsport. And so that'll be a breakthrough that comes along at some point in time. Now, an interesting question here will be who leaps off the line first, understanding that Scotty McLaughlin is on the dirty side of the road. And that's the view from Mark Winterbottom's Botolo Racing Ford Falcon. That's the racing line. Ideally, you'll get more grip from there. So just panning across and looking at the pole sitter, Scotty McLaughlin. That's what you're dealing with. So often there's a little bit of dirt and debris up the inside of the road. And when you're on the left side here, it pinches you on the run into turn one, unless you're clear of the traffic. If you're clear, you can sweep back out to the right and take the normal racing line. It's only 150 metres from that line that you can see across the road to the apex of turn one. It's not very far. And we see big moments down there. 
because wide of the line, there's a lot of dirt, a lot of rubber, a lot of debris, and there's absolutely no grip. Off, uh, teams may approach the grid. We've got a delayed start. So I just heard race director Tim Schenken say engines off. And so we'll have to go back through the cycle here. We've got a timing issue to of those deal on, with. Uh, and I can hear Tim's voice in the background. So that means that we'll restart that sequence and go back to square one there. And Windside Cam's race control. A chance to say hi and thank you to all the volunteer marshals and all of those that put together these race events for us week in and week out, the Cam's affiliated clubs. Big chance this afternoon that a supercar lap record is going to tumble. Garth Tander achieved it here in 2012, 1 minute 30.9. And based on the speed that's being generated by these new Dunlop super soft tyres, half a chance to roll that one. Race winners out there, active drivers. There's 10 of them that have won a race here. Lowndes has had five. Van Gisbergen's had three. Jamie Wincup on screen a moment ago has had three victories. Chas Mostert's won twice here. Will Davison, Rick Kelly, Todd Kelly, Scotty McLaughlin, Garth Tander, Mark Winterbottom have each won a race. 1,800 points available, Mark, between now and the end of the championship. And this is a little break in the sequence that you do not want. Exactly. It's hard to keep your composure and your focus and the level of relaxation that you're trying to get into your game before the start of these races. This always makes it more anxious. And firstly, you don't really know why it's been delayed, so then the guys have to relay that information to you. And then the second part is, you feel like you've got to go through the whole process again. You've just done that process, you're just about to drive off on the warm-up lap, and now you've got to go back to ground zero. And often, it just takes the edge off the way you start the car. Also takes us closer to the possibility of time certainty. 27 minutes past five o'clock, if you recall, in the Pino Hub presentation there before. So uh, everybody goes back into the start-up sequence again. I'm not sure why they'll be doing that. I don't think you really need to lift the car back up again, do you? It's just in case, I guess, there's any, any issues. Change of livery this weekend and a change of number for Will Davison, car number 95, with the Cars 3 Lightning McQueen livery on that car. A couple of interesting uh, performances that have been noteworthy that we didn't get a chance to celebrate during the session. One of them there we just panned through and that was Scotty Pye in qualifying because we were all excited about what was going on up the front for lap speed. We didn't get a chance to talk about the fact that he managed to get that Mobile One HSV Racing Commodore up into position number nine. That was a season best for him. Just while we're waiting to get this start underway, let's celebrate and have a look at this performance of Scotty McLaughlin. Back to fifth gear for turn one. Crank it up and enjoy this and we'll do a bit of an analysis off the back. talking earlier when we watched that lap about going back to second gear I think most of the reason or this there's, there's two points for that it's a beautiful lap a he flicks it back to second to get it turned in so it actually helps the phase of getting the nose of the car to the apex as we pick up on the championship points there 129 points of drift there for wing cup versus scott mclaughlin and the other thing that it does is it gives you a little reprieve when you make the gear change from second to third it just stops it from oversteering for a second. You just get a little bit of clutch style reaction. And that's probably a way of containing the wheel spin and fixing a little bit of oversteer coming out of the straight. What I'm really looking forward to is this run down, and we just saw the shot from the front of Mark, McLaughlin, uh, Mark Winterbottom's car, of McLaughlin and 
Frosty trying to get into turn one. The outside, the grip, you can see that run from the outside there is the clean line. The last couple of starts, McLaughlin's one been minute. beaten by Mostert and Lowndes. And from a similar circumstance, there'll be a lot of pressure on him to get that car into turn one in front of Frosty. Other observations from that lap. It was on the rev limiter a couple of times around the back of the course, which was interesting, so it made great mid-corner pace. But it was very nosy in a couple of spots where he really had the back of the car at uh, turns four and five. The nose was pegged and the back of it was sliding a lot. So you've got to have the cars like that, very sharp in the front. Let's go back inside Cam's race control to be able to get one lap speed out of them. But you won't be able to do that for 31 laps. <laughs> That's right. In fact, you're probably not able to do that for more than about one lap. But that was the one that counted, and it gave him a very decent cushion at the end of it of 0.215 of a second. That's a lot of time in this field at the moment. Time certain finish and the race distance have been confirmed by cams and race controllers remaining unchanged. We go through a second start sequence now. Formation lap commencing. Off on the formation lap. And it's time for us to check out our Triple M starting grid. From the dirty side of the road on the pole position for the 12th time of the season, Scott McLaughlin, Shell V Power Racing, and a season best qualifying front row for Mark Winterbottom. Shane Van Gisbergen, position three together with Fabian Coulthard. Jamie Wincup together with Tim Slade out of positions five and six. And then Chaz Mostert and David Reynolds made mention of this performance earlier on with Mark in our conversation. Scott High season best performance to qualify ninth alongside Craig Lowndes, who's got five race victories here. Michael Crusoe and Cam Waters, then Todd Kelly and Will Davis and Lightning McQueen this weekend. James Courtney and Jason Bright out of 15 and 16. Positions 17 and 18. Rick Kelly and Garth Panda, Nissan Altima and Holden Commodore. AC Delco on the carpet in Kirkhat this weekend, together with James Moffat, who just can't get a handle on the setup, as you heard him say on the grid. Lee Holdsworth is next, together with Simona Di Silvestro on the Harvey Norman entry. Tim Blanchard and Dale Wood, followed then by Alex Davison and Alex Rulo in the Repair Management Australia entries. 26 cars, the final sprint race weekend of this portion of the championship before we launch into the Pertec Enduro Cup. The 500 kilometres of racing at Sandown, 1,000 kilometres of racing at Bathurst, and then another 600 k's for two races at the Gold Coast. And then we return back to a sprint format. So it gets really interesting at this point in the championship. There's a little cushion in favour of Scott McLaughlin. It doesn't mean much the way things work here because everything can change in motorsport in an eye blink. Onboard cameras in every car in this field and multiples of those as we join Scotty McLaughlin now. They're watching intently back in the garage with the telemetry coming from that car, making sure that brake temps front and rear and tyre temperatures and pressures are beginning to normalise. Chaz Mostert, winner last time out. Race number 16, Queensland Raceway. An extra security tug on those belts just to tighten him up so that he can feel every tiny fractional movement in that car. Rick Kelly, Nissan Altima for Sengled. Rick starts down the order in position number 17. Lightning McQueen, car number 95, otherwise known as Will Davison. Techno Auto Sports with a new workshop. They celebrated a big open day just recently on the Gold Coast. Mark Winterbottom off the front row of the grid for Botlow Racing. This is a big one for Ford fans. He's got some confidence back in this car. They've got a setup that's working. And remember that in the case of Frosty, he's still well and truly in touch in this championship. He's sixth at the moment. He's 561 points back, but I keep making the point about the total prize pool that's available here. The view from Frosty's car to the pole sitter, front row of the grid. And the game started when the cars walked away on the formation lap because Frosty just wheeled away first. He got the jump straight away on Scott McLaughlin. The gamesmanship's already started. The way that you do that to identify that you've got the clean line and you've got the start in hand. This will be very interesting into turn one. Engineers just bringing their drivers in millimetre by millimetre to position. I can see John McGregor for Craig Lowndes, Steve Todkill for Michael Caruso, Campbell Little, for Will Davison. 129 points between McLaughlin. Green flag, green He's on the flag. pole. And Wincup, who's second in the championship, he'll start from fifth. Row two, Van Gisbergen and Fabian. 31 laps, 120 kilometres. Race 17 in Sydney. Nothing in it off the front row. But now Winterbottom sweeps over and claims the rightful line. Three wide in one. That's an awkward position 
waiting for Fabian to be. We've got trouble at the back of the pack. Someone speared off. In fact, there's multiples involved. What a great start that was for Frosty. Got an immediate march, moved it out, and was able to get to the right-hand side of the road. Look at the gap. Great job, Mark Winterbottom. On board with Mostert. Cold tyres. And we've got Wink up in the weeds over the top of the hill. McLaughlin and Coulthard. And Winterbottom, uh, Winter should I say, Wink up out there wide again off the top of four because Winterbottom is bolting. He's got a margin while all this stuff that's crazy is going on at the moment. Look at this. So the green bottle car has bolted, but for Wink up those last several corners, what a handful. He was on the outside of turn three, then right around the outside of turn four, turned it in from the grass for turn five. And a good performance also in the immediate jump for Van Gisbergen. And they were four abreast. Slade was around the outside of McLaughlin, Coulthard and Winkup. He gave it away, but there were three cars all abreast into turn one. Great start again for Winterbottom, who's got almost 0.8 of a second there as we complete lap one. There it is. So I think James Courtney may have been involved in something because I can hear them counselling him about it being a long race. And generally that's what happens when you haven't had a good start. So McLaughlin's dropped a couple of spots. Winterbottom's the leader. Drag race into turn one. Reynolds runs wide on the exit of one. That's Mostert down the inside of him. Dances that Commodore back on, but he's high and wide down there at turn two. Lots of people fighting the edge of the road at the moment. And he got a nice run from two to three. Can Mostert do the crisscross? It looks like he could, but he doesn't quite get the nose of the Falcon down the inside there. So he went from having the line around the inside of turn two, that then become the outside of turn three, and tried to sneak down the inside of turn four. This is a great battle at the front, remembering that Van Gisbergen and, and Winkup had an epic battle this time last year in the Saturday race, and what a great jump we've got for Mark Winterbottom. He's a very good leader. He's a lot like Winkup. When he's in the lead, he gets his head down, he drives the car very straight, and this now is being patient enough and looking after the tyre in race, in the race format that we've spoken of many times. There'll be lots of strategy to play out. This is Van Gisbergen looking back at McLaughlin. Ted has jumped a few spots in the opening Good couple drive, of laps mate. as well. Long race, long stints on this circuit. Good work. So he's moved up three spots from 18th. Garth Panda He's up into 15th now. The fastest lap of the race, Fabian Coulthard, position four. We're riding on board with him at turn one. Frosty's got three quarters of a second on Van Gisbergen at the moment. This is interesting now because the Shell V Power cars have shown pace. They don't have track position. Replay of the start, and there was some nonsense in the mid-pack and beyond as we were focused up the front. It looked even in terms of the initial leap and reaction times, but the secondary phase of the start was ideal for Winterbottom, who swept down. They ran three wide for Fabian. There was no grip out there. And then uh, it was Will Davison, who ended up getting carted wide down there at one. Who did that? How did that would have been helped. A bit of a mystery here. So here's the four abreast that I spoke of. It was Van Gisbergen, McLaughlin, Fabian and Slade. In the end, now who got who got him? Jason Bright got tagged by Will Davison there as well, but I got a feeling that he got upended as well. That is, Will did. Look at that for a yeah. shot. Well, that was Bright sideways. Here it is. Here's the jump. And your point about the second part of the start was very good because the first jump, pretty even. And now... He minimised the wheel spin, moved it away beautifully. That's the clean side of the road. And then he gets it over to the right, as you said before. Now, look at this. Over there is Slade. Caught up around the outside, and that's Van Gisbergen on the inside. So this is pretty hectic when they got to turn two. Now, I think this is Tanda. That's Tanda. So look at this. There's Bright. And Will Davis. A little bump there with Courtney. That's right. Yeah, that's the reason why they're on the radio to James. And so they locked horns down there and interlocked front wheels. Van Gisbergen was perfectly positioned to get down the inside. And then that scuttled the pack. 
back in the order. Now Van Gisbergen has actually closed down that margin on Mark Winterbottom. Fastest lap still belongs to Fabian Coulthard. He looks threatening at the moment, doesn't he, Van Gisbergen? So that cushion that Mark Winterbottom enjoyed has disappeared. It's now officially 0.2 of a second, but he's within striking distance, Van Gisbergen. And he's got form at this location. Three wins, couple of poles, strong here in recent events. I said earlier in the day, I just sensed him floating back up the order again after a couple of ropey rounds. It was a great drive here last year. He held off his teammate, come in earlier, roughly mid-race, about lap 15. And when he did that, he got the undercover and wink up. And at the end of the race, he held on for one of the best drives of the year in terms of his maturity and his championship was definitely benefited by the way he drove here in 2016. And there was only two tenths of a second in it when they got to the chequered flag. The three laps difference in their pit stops was interesting because Wincup had pace on the younger tyres. We're looking from the rear bumper of Mark Winterbottom's car. He's currently got 0.28 of a second officially over Van Gisbergen and Gizzy's threatening and he likes to pounce in unorthodox places. So keep an eye on him on the run into turn four and watch him down into the hairpin at eight as well. Frosty's been around, it's not his first rodeo. He knows where to cover. He certainly does. Now you spoke about lap records. We've got six cars that have broken the lap record already. So the first six cars from Winterbottom through to Slade have all broken the long-standing race lap record of Garth Panda from 2012. The spread across the top six cars at the moment is only 2.4 seconds. So the other thing that is going to be interesting here, who blinks first for the tyre stop? Again, Van Gisbergen just stalking Winterbottom under brakes. So not quite close enough at the moment. And they'll all be starting to settle down now. I know the trend in their car. They'll be frantically working front and rear anti-roll bars, trimming up that brake bias, getting themselves sorted. And from about now on, you really feel the diminishing tyre grip. It changes the game. Here we are on board with Van Gisbergen. This will give us a sense of strengths and weaknesses. I just asked our director to give us this shot because it's got too much oversteer now. Frosty's car, the reason he's gaining, he can't maintain the mid-corner pace. And that gain for Van Gisbergen over the last couple of laps has come from Frosty's oversteer. The amount of rear grip the Falcons got is starting to diminish and starting to hurt the tyre. Look how much pressure he's putting on him already. Shame it's a little stronger off turn one that time, even though it danced a little on the concrete apron at the very end. The right-hander here at four off the top of the hill. So watch for him to dart somewhere. He'll try and get him in an unorthodox spot blind side winner bottom if he's got some more pace it's not quite close enough at the moment but if he can see and sense the back of the bottle car just starting to slide a bit then that's the big incentive that he needs he'll know to be patient so no further action they've done an investigation on what happened down there at turn one it's been deemed a racing incident which looks about right and if you're into vehicle dynamics, have a really close look at the difference in the exit line between Shane Van Gisbergen's Holden and Mark Winterbottom's Falcon, because that Ford at the moment is sliding more from the mid corner, uses more exit road, and you can see how much more narrow and straighter that Van Gisbergen can drive the car. So look for the exits, look for the trajectory and the way that the car achieves its speed coming off the corner at the moment definitely better and that will not only help him in terms of his one lap speed but it'll also it'll make the tyre life better through the course of the run. See how wide Mark Winterbottom was there at turn one. Just watch again from the middle of turn two. Runs it wider again. He can run it narrower. Better speed. Nice exit for Frosty. They've got two different characteristics in their cars and it's typical of what we see strengths and weaknesses through the speed range of corners. Shane gets very close in the mid-corner down there at turn two. Frosty will also sense that in a couple of places he's off the hook a little here now. He won't have the feeling that the nose of that Commodore is going to jump out from under his mirrors any tick of the clock. That also gives you a little confidence boost and it allows you to get on with the... You hear the engineers encouraging the drivers on eyes forward, eyes forward. Concentrate on your own car. 
You saw how much Mark Winterbottom was working that corner exit at turn one. There wasn't a millimetre left on the concrete apron down there. He's got a tiny little gap here now. And it looks like he's just a fraction better in a couple of these medium speed corners. Shane's quite good in the low speed corners, but he's also achieving it by turning the car a little differently. Good run here for Tim Slade, Freightliner Racing. He's tucked right in behind the Red Bull Holden Racing Team car of Jamie Whitcup, whose opening lap or two was pretty wild. He spent a bit of it motocrossing. It certainly did. So what happens with pit strategy? Do you, we saw cars start to come in from about this time last year. So do you, do you take the plunge, make the move, do the undercut? Or do you wait a little bit and conserve? Well, last year proved to us that those that got to the mid-race and beyond benefited. There were a bunch of cars. There was probably roughly half the field pitted between laps 7 and 11. And they were effectively punished for their troubles. And those that pitted from about the <laughs> mid-race, they? they were. <laughs> It looked like a good idea at the time until you had to get those tyres to the end of the race. But you got a little bit of temporary gain out of it. <laughs> so Ben Gisbergen, who came in on 15? He came in on 14 last year and Jamie came in on 17. So that was the way that the race was won last year. Year on year, the degradation is worse. Remember, we've got a new tyre. We're using the super soft tyre, but a new construction. The tyre's taller. It's got a different carcass and molding of the tyre, so it looks a lot different. It's a, a bigger tyre in terms of its overall circumference. So everyone at this point, they're pioneering a bit. Something we've been working on that we thought you might find interesting at home is this little graphic that's coming out of the telemetry on Tim Slade's car at the moment. So there's tyre pressure monitoring on these cars now, uh, which also gives us the opportunity to measure the air temperature in the bag, so it's not the tread face, it's not an infrared number that's generated out of a Formula One car because of the sensors, but it gives us an idea. This is the information that the engineers get. So you can see there that the right front gets a real punish around here. So it's up around 99 degrees. Remember, water boils at 100 degrees, so those tires are hot. And not only that, it's if you actually had the surface temperatures, they'd, they'd be markedly hotter than that. But you can also tell by the balance. So if you've got a bit of understeer, the front tyres are hot. If you've got a bit of oversteer, the rear tyres are hotter. And look at the pressure now that Van Gisbergen. I reckon that's a sneaky spot in there between four and five that Van Gisbergen's looked at a couple of times. Car's very good in the middle part of those longer radius corners to see whether he can get a good run up over Corporate Hill and into Turn 8 is the other one. And if they feel, they asked him a moment ago, what was the car like for Shane? He said, it's OK, but I can't get by. That'll also be a key to Grant McPherson to just have a think about whether they just try and pop an undercut in here for a lap. Yeah. So if he gets right on the rear bumper and then there's a sense of frustration, they might just peel him out and see whether they can bolt Botlo car. We're starting to come up to the phase of the race where this is really interesting. Cam Waters on screen, position 11, and a great freight train of cars behind. Movers and shakers. Tander's the best of them in the top 20. He's moved up those three spots I mentioned before, but he's still planted in 15th, having started 18. There he is. In behind his old teammate, James Courtney. And James appeared to be involved in a little bit of the headbutting, and they're peeling Courtney out now in the Boost Mobile entry. Mobile One HSV Racing comes to the line. So first to come in and grab tyres. Lowndes is now all over the back of Mostert. This is for positions eight and nine. <laughs> and uh, Wincup's been told no more curb hops as that, well. That'll affect him for the rest of the race. Because those couple of key exits from eight and from five, if you actually have to have a run at somebody, you want to keep those in the bag till later to see James Courtney pull up, roll the marks, nicely done. Oh, nice little post stop. stop. Go, mate, the number one HSV guys. Wheels it back out. Lounds, big pressure on. Lost it there in seventh and eighth. This is an interesting phase because it's right now that we're starting to get some radio contact. They've just broken the gap from McLaughlin back to Coulthard. There's a gap there, and you can see Wincup putting a lot of pressure on 
Fabian. Now, Fabian may have made a little mistake there because he wasn't that far behind Scott last time we caught the two shell cars. And what actually happens here is because it's so hard, I think we're hearing from Ludo come in this lap. So it won't be too far away. That was the other thing I was going to say. I talked about how they reacted Red Bull, but it's how they reacted Shell as well that we need to keep an eye on, and they have now reacted. So Ludo's opting for an undercut here. That means he's going to ask the tyres that are incoming to do a much bigger, longer job. Got him. Van Gisbergen got him at turn two. So it's all going on. McLaughlin in. And a change for the lead. Oh, very good here and very fast for the 17. Four tyres put on, no fuel gone in that car, but he was away nice and clean, boys. This will be interesting. It's worth about a second and a half. And, yeah, so he's saying push. Grant McPherson saying push. And you almost get caught now to say, I've got to go. I've, I've got to play to the shell card now. You get, I would imagine they're going to have to bring Van Gisbergen in right now. He's got clear air. He's pushing. But if they do another lap out there, he'll be vulnerable to McLaughlin. So he, they may pull a rabbit out of a hat. Here's the replay of what happened. A nice job. That was a bank robbery. Straight down the inside with the mask on, grabbed the cash and gone. Here's Slade. That's got a uh, fail right front tyre. But I don't know whether it's a front suspension failure or just a tyre failure. But you said before that he was going to make a surprise move. That was a surprise move. There's the tyre failure. Now, I'm not sure whether it come from the a drama of a wheel knock or it actually was a genuine and tyre reacting, failure. There you go. Reacting at uh, Red Bull like we suggested. And uh, that front tyre temp surprised me when I saw it before. So, uh, and they're down there. I think it was Kevin from Dunlop was looking very carefully at that tyre. This is going to be interesting, folks. Big pressure on the team at Red Bull Holden Racing Team to process this car quickly because they brought the shell car in. He's got the benefit of grip. This guy had some clear air, Van Gisbergen. It'll be close on exit, Murph. Yeah, he's uh, got a nice clear run and guys, no fuel going in the 97. Just making sure, looking, mate, how even the tyre guys are. They've got two guys on the rears, one on the front, the right front slow. Not too bad, but they definitely lost maybe half a second, four tenths. Uh, that right front was slow. Meantime, McLaughlin's done the session or the race best middle split in this race. It's on here with Wincup, and look at that. Look at that, he's got him. So Wincup having a battle there as well. Oh! Big lock up on a cold tyre for Gizzy down at turn two. He runs wide. Costs him massive amounts of time down there. That'll be a, a factor and a component to think about relative to Winterbottom now as well. That'll potentially put him back behind Winterbottom. That's right, but also it'll be a drama for the rest of the race. It's the loaded front. So when you have that... Scott, he's saving tyres already. Oh, he's saving tyres already, he's being told. There's a chat there from Grant. Straight to Shane. You've got to try to compose him now because he won't want to see the shell car in front by that far. A little bit of cat and mouse here between Wink Cup and Fabian. Wink Cup's been able to make that move and move ahead of him. McLaughlin's going to put some good laps in, but at the end of the day, you've got still 19 laps remaining. So you can't use the tyre too hard too early because it's going to be a real test later on. So Mark Winterbottom, who currently leads still from Jamie Winkup and Fabian Kultar. Mostert and Lowndes. There's David Reynolds in the pit right now. And the last lap for Winterbottom was yeah, at 32.9. Yeah, yeah. So all of the energy, grip and juice has gone out of those tyres in high 32s. Interesting for the pit stop time in comparison. Car number 17, McLaughlin, 4.3 seconds. For car number 97 with that snag right front, 5.7. 1.4 seconds difference in the stop in favour of car number 17. Yeah, we thought the rejoin was going to be really close, but that little snag with the stop and the, the undercut. Difference. And the undercut, that's right. But it was going to be very close because, remember, he was already behind them by, by a margin before the stops. So Scott McLaughlin has been the beneficiary of that little bubble in the pit stop. And now we're on board with Scott through turn four, turn five, sacrifice the road on the way out of four to five. And he's going to need telescopic elbows to be able to get through to the end of this because the tyres will hurt late in the stint. And that's the reason why they've asked him to conserve straight away as Tanner gets up the inside of Camp Waters. Nick Perkat's in this battle as well. That's Garth Tanner now tonight. 
understanding that we've had half a dozen or so drivers already peel off. And leading that queue is McLaughlin over Van Gisbergen and Reynolds, who we had a glimpse of in the pits before. And now Percat comes in, the AC Delco entry. 18 laps remaining. Last lap was a 33-1 for Winterbottom, plays a 32-2 for Wind Cup. Yeah, good pace for Wind Cup. In fact, he's almost a second faster than Fabian Coulthard. So we saw his tyre conservation last year. There you go, there are the times. 33-1, plays a 32-2, 33-0, and then McLaughlin with a 30.6. And this guy on screen, Van Gisbergen, just did a 30.6 as well. Here's the stop. Focus on the right front. When the incoming wheel and tyre goes on, it was just a little bit difficult to locate. Just a tiny little bit of hurt in that one, not much. And there's the rejoin, cushion in hand. So he had a margin. And then this big lock up down into turn two. And uh, to Mark's point, big chance there's a, a little flat spot on that tyre on the left front corner of car number 97. There's the gap. And uh, he's Take it Frosty's margin. got a very small margin now over Wind Cup because that last lap that we called for Wind Cup, I said that was much, much quicker than Frosty's lap time. So he's taken a big cushion out there, hasn't he? Yeah, almost a second on the previous lap, and it's continued, which is what you've been saying the whole time. This degradation of the tyre is not linear. It gets much worse later in these runs. And look at the times. 0.6, he lost a little bit there, 0 0.8, 0 0.9, so almost a second on lap 14, Rusty. You should have seen Brad Jones's face when Tim Slade pitted before. Now, when that right front blew, it blew unexpectedly. They don't believe it's from contact with another car. They were not expecting to bring Tim Slade in until lap 15. So, remember, those guys were handily placed, weren't they? Yeah, we didn't know, and that's a good pickup, Rusty. We didn't know whether there was a little bit of contact there, and that, a little bit of tit for tat. A little bump from Wind Cup to Winterbottom on the way out of turn three, and then a return serve from Winterbottom back to Wind Cup on the way out of turn four. So this is good. But these guys, driving, because they're stuff. running along at the moment, are running the risk of getting climbed over by those that are down the order behind McLaughlin and Van Gisbergen. Like, for example, Reynolds is a big chance to snip these guys at the moment. But we'll come back in spades at the end. We saw it last year where Wind Cup was able to make huge margin on Van Gisbergen. Now watch this, as Frosty gets a bit wide, they come out of here together, which is very nice, but this wasn't so nice. So a little bump late in the corner, right now. Just that little bump, you saw him get him a little oversteering, give him a little bump and upset the back of the Falcon. So watch it again now, on board with Wind Cup. So you'll see it as they make the next apex, just bang, gotcha, moved up the inside. So that all works. The problem is that Mark Winterbottom doesn't actually forget that within 100 metres. So he gives him a whack on the way out of turn four. This is great stuff. I love the aggressive exchange with two of the best guys from Ford and Holden. And they've had some great battles over the years. And it's good to see those two toe to toe again. It's been a little while between drinks for Mark Winterbottom. So Win Cup's the leader of the race. He's got 1.18 seconds over Winterbottom and Coulthard now. These guys are drifting in their lap speed, but they're hoping for the payback, for the dividend to come when they put their new tyres on. So we're now in that zone on lap 16, where last year, for example, Wind Cup came in on lap 17, and then he missed out on the race victory by two tenths of a second. That's what they're banking on at Red Bull. Tander, Tim Blanchard. Cam Waters has come out there with Dale Wood. Percat's very quick out there now, 30.5 last lap, fastest lap of the race for him as Mostert and Lowndes continue their battle for fourth and fifth at the moment. Will Davison, who had just done the fastest lap of the race prior, has just been knocked off by Nick Percat, who's broken the lap record with a 30.54. He's actually two ten thousandths of a second, sorry, five ten thousandths of a second faster than Will Davison, so very, very close in Win terms of overall lap speed. Wind Cup's in, Winter Bottom's in. So, and Coulthard's gone with him. So this is really interesting now as well, together with Mostert and Lowndes. It's happy hour in the pit lane. 
Caruso's joining them. So Wind Cup, Winterbottom, Coulthard, Mostert, Lowndes, Caruso, the six front runners have all peeled in. Greg? Yeah, Frosty's on his way and he's going to get a run through Mostert's pit, who's also in the lane. We'll keep an eye on the number five. He's been struggling clearly with balance in that car. After having such a great qualifying performance, this is not a great stop. They've had trouble on three of the wheels. Coulthard is going to jump him easy. Mostert's having a bad stop as well. I don't think that was as clean as what it needed to be. So Frosty, not only is the car not performing, he's had a bad stop. Yeah, that's a travesty there for Mark Winterbottom. But look at the rejoin. So Reynolds has jumped all those guys in that exchange, which is what you said before. But Coulthard was able to take a little free kick there with a mistake from PRA and Mark Winterbottom. But remember, this is not done. That's right. So we kind of knew from the way the trend lines were going, lap speed-wise, that Reynolds was going to do that. Now these fellas that are on screen with the fresh tyres, younger tyres, they're looking for the payback later in the race. So nice job at Shelby Power Racing to vault the Botlow entry there. So 12 is now in front of five. Mostert, then Courtney, then his teammate, Scotty High next. Uh, so there's only two drivers yet to, we've got a drama here. Todd Kelly with a right-hand rear tyre that's exploded, isn't it? Big time, and it's damaged the composite guard there as well. So there's just two cars that have not stopped. Rick Kelly and his teammate Simone Di Silvestro. Oh, wow. This is on. Tanda versus Blanchard on the run to turn six. Looked a bit willing and Lee Holdsworth's here as well. And now Tanda's down the inside. It's not over yet. And now they've got themselves sorted out. Kelly leads from Simona Di Silvestro. Neither of those two have stopped. Leading the race, having stopped, is McLaughlin over Van Gisbergen. And you can see all the debris on the road from that tyre failure. I presume that's from Todd Kelly. Yeah. Or is that the earlier one from Tim Slade? Oh, Whatever it is, it's plenty of junk, isn't it? I think it? it's Todd's one, isn't it? But it might be a safety car with that because you become a one lane race track down there. Safety car boards and flags, safety car boards and flags, safety car stand push the ball. Now, those guys that just pitted are going to get a Christmas present, and it's uh, a little early for Christmas, 19th of August, but because the safety cars come out, uh, anybody that's on a, 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 a young tyre now, when the field's compressed, is going to look like they've got a, a Ferrari amongst the Formula Fords. Exactly. So, so the gap it. will come right back. And this is a massive benefit for those that have just stopped. So they don't need to, what this does is it compacts the field and they don't need to use the tires and work the car hard to get back to the back of the guys that stopped earlier. So McLaughlin and Van Gisbergen who stopped earlier will be also able to rest those tires at that point. So that's not a bad thing for them either. Vodafone safety car has control of the field. Shortly we'll show you what happened in the pit lane between Coulthard and Winterbottom, but that was a lot of the composite guard that we presume was from Todd Kelly's car. There's the sun here late in the afternoon. Directly west into turn one. And there's the stop. Look at this. There goes the Shell V Power Falcon. And he just had to yield, didn't he? There was nowhere to go for Mark Winterbottom. So now Rick Kelly and Simona have pitted, and that was Todd Kelly that deposited a lot of that uh, damaged rear guard on the road there up to turn uh, nine. So McLaughlin, Van Gisbergen, Reynolds, nice job. Position number three, there he is on screen, the Penrite entry, followed by Wind Cup, Coulthard, Winterbottom, Mostert, Courtney Pye, Lowndes, Caruso, Will Davison. Not a bad recovery for Will, considering he was uh, off the road on the outside of turn one on lap one. Well done to all our officials again, Neil. They uh, they do a tremendous job across our championship, and the guys are out there as quickly as possible to get that debris off the road and get our race back underway. And, but you needed to do that because when you come out of turn eight, just before that part of the racetrack, it's the slowest corner on the track, and a lot of times cars come out of there alongside each other, so it becomes unsafe if you take two cars. Uh, up into turn nine or ten, there's a requirement to have a nice clean line there, and the guys didn't really have much choice in race control in terms of putting the safety car out, getting that cleaned up, 
and getting back on with play as quickly as possible. Everyone now has compacted, and what we said was the benefit of those cars that you can see at the back of this queue with Wing Cup and Fabian Coulthard and Mark Winterbottom, jump, who have away. now come right to the back of the cars who stopped earlier. It's a big benefit for those competitors, Rihanna. Yeah, so like you saw with Tim Slade for Todd Kelly, right rear tyre failure and no uh, warning for Todd at all. So major explosion for him and real, real shame for that team. Yeah, we don't normally see it happen with that level of damage going so fast. It's over 205 kilometres an hour where that tyre failed. No wonder it tears the rear guard off. So, here we go. Getting very close to oh, some games being played up here with Shane. Shane's alongside him. They're bumping. They're bumping along the straight. He wasn't in front of the control line. This is a great move by Van Gisbergen. He's going to get this done. He's played the card. He's run early. He's bumped him all the way down the straight. And he's out-muscled him. Great move, Shane Van Gisbergen. That was, we were somewhat mystified, wondering what was going on. And it's still going on. And he's turned him. McLaughlin has turned Van Gisbergen at turn two. Does Shane survive that one? That's a pivotal moment in the championship. McLaughlin will be in serious trouble over that. And a huge amount of damage for Wink Cup. Now, this is a championship changer, not only by the mistake and the drama we saw at the start, but the contact with McLaughlin on Van Gisbergen and now the resultant damage on the front of Wink Cup. Remember, he's in second in the championship. He won't finish this race based on that. Look at that. The guy's getting ready. This is a big one for Red Bull Racing with two cars out on lap 20 of 31. Big damage on David's car as well. Front and rear on the Erebus Penride entry. So Jamie's just battling on there at the moment, both of them, but they're going to have to deal with the damage, particularly on that car. Reynolds may get away with it, but I doubt it. But for Wind Cup, there's no way he'll survive this. So what a disaster. What a bizarre restart. So the rule is you can overlap prior to the control line, but you okay, can't mate, overtake prior. Stay out prior. for now, please. Stay out for now. Um, we'll have a look at this guard. So David Couch is saying, we'll have a look at this guard. He's over and out. So he's had to back it off. He knows he's in serious trouble. And it's the loaded front. So you can't get away with a tyre rubbing at this place with a right-hand front tyre that possibly could fail as a consequence. Look at that there. The under investigation, all right. So... <laughs> uh, now, who, the guy that's ideally positioned here at the moment is in actual fact Fabian Coulthard, who stopped on lap 16. So relative to his teammate, he's got six laps younger tyres. Here's the replay of the start. This was baffling. So the contact's the part that's interesting me. I don't understand why that needed to happen. Provided there was an overlap and he wasn't in front of the control line, then Shane's allowed to be there, but the contact was weird. Yeah, there's some dodgy car stuff going down the start finish straight, and he was on the inside. He timed it very well, so you can see he hasn't overlapped. Oh, sorry, he's got the overlap, but he actually hasn't rounded him up at this point. But he does later on. So he gets to turn one, he makes that move. Now, this is the interesting one. Check this out. Because he brakes, he gets the car stopped, and... And bang. Yeah, but did Scott have someone... There's damage on the front of David's car. So I wonder whether that happened just prior to the rotation of McLaughlin. Here we go. This might tell us. Does he get hit? No. You know, so McLaughlin was definitely on his own there. Yep. So he'll be in strife. He'll go to the back because he's... There's heaps of gap there, and ah, that's the damage. Right, yes. So they all pop up. That was the secondary effect. So I wondered whether or not David had got into the back of them. But look, they're soldiering on with 88 here at the moment. And how that thing's surviving, a miracle. So it'll be making water temperature, and they're all monstering car number 88 at the moment. But they'll be looking carefully at telemetry to see whether they can get it to survive, because if they peel off and bring it in now, it's all over for him, which will be the second time in successive racing Saturdays that Wind Cup's had a bad one. Now Winterbottom's in this game as well. 
McLaughlin is still the leader. He's only got a second in hand from his teammate who's got a pile of grip available. Coulthard's the best position here for tyre grip. Six lap younger tyres for him. We spoke about it before the start of this race and the amount of Saturday action that we've seen this year and the bearing that it's had on the championship, it's been unbelievable again today. And a big chance for a penalty for McLaughlin for here. Sure. For sure. Which is the, one of the reasons that they'll be considering it at Red Bull for the reason why you'd want Win Cup to stay out. Yep. Because finishing is going to be key. Look at both those cars just battered and beaten front and rear. So to your point, even if Win Cup finishes seventh or eighth, Change it's going to be a lead. lot better. It's going to be a lot better than the other way. Change for the lead as Coulthard now takes command from his teammate. He's got a pile of grip in hand. Fabian Coulthard is going to skip away with this one. There's the witness mark on the right front. There's the witness mark right there on Scott McLaughlin's car for the damage and the bump on Van Giesbergen. So he'll be in stride. I reckon they'll give him a drive-through. I, I think he'll go to the back of the field. So when that happens, he'll be, end up down where Van Giesbergen is. Wind Cup and day. David Reynolds at the moment are surviving. Can you believe it? They prepared in the Red Bull Holden Racing Team garage to bring 88 in but they'll be monitoring those temps on that thing. Post-race investigation for the restart and turn two has just come up. That's the easiest review I've ever done. Well, there you go. So they'll look at that one later, and they'll be looking at it in total terms, the restart and what happened down there at two. And that will be a lively debate, because the heavyweights will go in there and discuss that with the driving standards advisor and the stewards, and it'll be on. Oh, it will be on, there's no doubt. But that mark there, and he wasn't bumped from behind, I, there is no way in the world that McLaughlin will get away with that. As we see the pass, Fabian, down the inside of his teammate on fresher tyres. So he'll drop off into the distance now, Fabian. He's, he's the man to beat in this race. But for Scott McLaughlin, I'm surprised that he doesn't get an immediate penalty and go to the back of the field for that one. And for the second successive year, Pitting later, having younger tyres, is giving a, a dividend. I've spoken to the guys at Erebus Motorsport. Uh, Barry Ryan has said mechanically Dave Reynolds is OK. Aerodynamically, it's performing poorly, but they should survive this race. Thanks, Rihanna. And, yeah, I agree. I, I think it, it will hang in. That one's probably not quite as bad as Jamie Winkup's, but nice move there. Frosty down the inside at turn one. Nice respect also from both competitors giving each other racing room. Might be a little bit less respect here as we get around the back of turn three. Scott Pye might make this stick. He has. Good job. So around the outside for Pye. He's on for a good result here. He's up to six. Turn four. Looking at the back of David Reynolds' car from the vantage point of Craig Lowndes' driving seat. These fellas are battling for seven, eight, nine, ten, that realm here. And Reynolds won't be able to sight these apexes of the left hand is because of the kink in that bonnet at the moment. Lounge is all over the back of him. So I'd love to have a look at the email threads at the moment from a couple of the teams out there going into race control. So you can bet your bottom dollar that uh, Shelby Power Racing will be asking the question, what was that restart all about? Why are we being run into? And then equally, there'll be arguments coming the other way about what happened down at turn two. So this is going to be a lively afternoon and evening. Right at the moment, though, for Fabian Coulthard, he's making big profit. Yeah, if I was one of the stewards, I'd be cancelling my restaurant booking. <laughs> because I'm sure there'll be some work to be done. I know he probably won't want to say anything at this point in time, given that it's under review, but Ryan Story, what is your, your take on the restart and how it played out? Well, it didn't look that flash, did it? I mean, uh, heading, heading, uh, heading into turn one there for, for Giz to be up alongside, it didn't appear that the safety car was uh, where it needed to be for that to start to taking place, but look, we'll see what happens. They're going to look at it post-race and, and we'll see where it goes. OK, thank you. Thanks, Jeff. A measured response from Ryan Story. Everybody will uh, take a deep breath and have a look at that one later. Lounge dive bombs David Reynolds down at turn four. Yeah, good move. I thought he was going to get that done, but he might be able to do the crisscross here when Dave runs a little bit wide coming out of five. Can Lounge get down here? As you said, the visibility for Dave will be compromised. Probably won't be as bad as Wink Cups. 
Yeah, she did a good job to get around the outside there. There must be reasonable grip on that new surface at turn six. And right through there, turn seven. This is Corporate Hill. And he tries to faint the other way. Great move, Craig Lowndes. Second time penalty, car 17 for a driving infringement at turn two. There we go. There you 15 go. seconds added to Scott McLaughlin. So we've just pulled out the uh, restart rule to just have a long, hard look at that one. So the reaction inside the Shell V-Power Racing Garage. Predictable. Here's the restart. And that would be quite distracting in both cockpits trying to work out what was going on there. And uh, the rule is you're permitted to overlap prior to the control line, but only after the apex of the final turn, provided the green flags have been displayed. That's all cool. Overtaking remains strictly forbidden until you cross the control line. That's cool. Tick on that one, unless the car slows with an obvious problem. Yeah, I think the, he's done it properly. The other bit, than the bumping. The bit that's weird is the bump and grind yeah. part. Yeah. But that's part of the gamesmanship as well. But this one... Bang. And that's done. Yeah. That's clumsy. That's really clumsy. From the guy leading the championship, you can't do that. It was an initial, but it was the secondary. So he actually picked the throttle back up in the secondary part of the corner. Probably anticipated being able to sneak up the inside, and that did not work. And Look then... Bang! Look at the damage from the right front. Yeah, that was a little peak hour shunt, wasn't it? So everyone knows to tail back in the pack, unsighted. So, let's just do the numbers, because he is three seconds behind oh. Fabian Coulthard, but you add 15, and that puts him 23. exactly behind... It puts him 22nd, 23rd, doesn't it? It puts yeah. him behind Slade. Ben Gisberg is currently 21st. So if you, if you say, does the penalty fit the crime? It's put him behind Van Gisbergen, but Van Gisbergen doesn't get his spot back. That's the issue. That's, that's the travesty in terms of how these things are dealt with and how fair they are. Because Van Gisbergen, after that move, was probably going to be pretty hard to beat in terms of his overall pace. Having said that, Fabian Coulthard with fresher tyres may have still worn him down and won this race. So, Fabian leading after a late stop for those tyres. He missed all the kerfuffle at turn two. On board now with Van Gisberg as he's trying to make a move down on Nick Perkat. He gets up there with a little bit of the crisscross action, but he'd be on the outside now for turn three. Can he make that move back the other way? He's trying to crisscross again. Will he get down there? He probably a fair chance he does. Well constructed. Good creative pass. A little bump there by Perkett. Probably didn't need to do that on the way out of four. But a lot of the overtaking at Sydney Motorsport Park comes from setting up early. And that was a pass that started in the braking area at turn two and finally took effect on the way into turn four. Slade now down the inside of his teammate. See in the background there. Simona just in behind them. That's in 22nd and 23rd position. Moffat around the outside with Cam Waters. And they're bumping on the way up to turn nine. That's the area where we saw the Todd Kelly tyre explosion. Moffat stays around the outside. He's caught up over the kerb. He'll be on the inside now. There's some bump and grind. Dale Wood makes it three abreast. He gets down the inside, he gives him another bump. This is pretty wild stuff. They're playing for keeps, and they're playing for 17th spot. Now, Moffat moves over on the inside of Van Gisbergen. He's taken two spots as a free kick from Dale Wood and Cam Waters. So up two positions, and Van Gisbergen gets to P18. Probably buy some fairly cheap mud guards here. Uh, about six o'clock tonight in front and rears, depending on your, whether you're a Ford or a Holden man. Plenty of them out there but going cheap. Uh, you're for a bargain, aren't you? Yeah, well, Arthur well, and Terry. <laughs> pretty willing out there, isn't it? So it the is. water's still glued to the back of uh, Dale Wood. 3.39 seconds now, Kiltan over McLaughlin. Amazed that uh, that car is still soldiering on out there at the moment, David Reynolds. And in fact, the same comment applies to Jamie Whitcup, which is so battered and beaten, but they've obviously studied the numbers. Getting him home and getting points is key. So some big moves, as you've already covered so far, Garth Tander, who's up eight spots. Blanchard's done a great job today. 
He's up 12 positions. Rick Kelly up five. Mostert up four. So there's been some real movers. Ben Gisbergen's the one that's been hurt. Same with Slade. Back 15 spots for each of those guys. And we'll, at the end of this race, obviously see Scott McLaughlin come back further with that 15 second time penalty. In fact, the 15 second time penalty now won't take him anywhere near back to where it was, Neil. The yeah, 15 right. seconds going to only, it's going to lob him into 13th or 14th, the way the field's spread out. Yeah, it's because those at the back of the field are dropping away and they've got good pace in 17. It's actually, uh, it's giving him a little bit of a benefit at the moment. Nick Perkett's come back in, incidentally, in the AC Delco car and uh, Cam Waters going to get the bad sportsmanship flag for exceeding track limits here. Remarkable job by the guys to A, leave Wink Up out there and for B, for Wink Up to drive it, take the load off the, off the right front and make this car get home because it's got a huge amount of damage and this is a championship changer because remembering that Scott McLaughlin's going to come back from 2nd to 13th or 14th, we'll work it out at the end and Wink Up, if he can finish, is currently 4th so there's a big gain, a big points benefit by being able to lift this car home. This is the seesaw in this championship, isn't it? I mean, just things change on a dime here. Unbelievable. So for a win cup at the moment in fourth position with a severely knocked around car, fourth position gives you a yield of 120 points. For McLaughlin at the moment, who's three and a half seconds off the lead, you add the 15, takes him to 18 seconds away. It takes him back to about 13th or thereabouts. And 13th will give you 66 points. So there'll be about a 60-point swing on the current numbers to crush that margin that we talked about of 129 points. It'll be roughly halved by the time we get to the end of this one, which is not far away. But the bit that's unfair is that Van Gisberg is 16th. So he was the one that was spun. And he's, he's actually going to finish behind the penalty of, of McLaughlin. You go get a big tub of popcorn. Yeah, both of us will sneak down outside the steward's office and sit down for some entertainment this afternoon because I reckon it'll be a bit of fun just sitting there watching this. <laughs> I think you're right. I'll get the drinks. I think you're right. But in team land, when the battle is on as, as hard and as ferocious as this battle's been through the course of the year, the rivalry between the Ford and Holden camps and DJR, Team Penske, Red Bull Racing Australia, there's Dick Johnson, who's very experienced at Stewart's Rooms. He's been very good at that over the years, having a little word to Ryan's story, saying, OK, how do we handle this? Because this is going to be big. It's been a great day for Fabian Coulthard. He's been the beneficiary of the late tyre stop and good speed. All, all prompt the for him. Car. Yep, got lots of grip. He put it to great effect. And uh, remember the shocker that he had in Townsville. It was a nice little claw back for him. Last time out at Queensland Raceway. So far this year, it's been three race victories for Fabian Coulthard. He's got one lap remaining now. And 150 points about to come his way. There's Chas Mostert on screen, currently in third position. So remember also, despite the damage on Reynolds' car, if you're wondering, because he was third after that uh, restart, he also came in in that early group of cars tyre-wise, so he's hurting a little bit for grip. Here we are with the race leader, car number 12, Fabian Coulthard. Just recently clicked over 34 years of age. His last race victory was race number 11 in Darwin. And when he closes this deal, that'll move his personal tally on to nine race victories. He's got just on four seconds over McLaughlin. And when you add the 15 seconds to Scotty's time, that's going to put him back in around about the 12, 13 realm in this race. And it'll have the effect of propelling Mostert and Wincup up onto the podium uh, positions two and three. So it's getting better lap by lap because now it's actually between Tanda and Blanchard. So he's going to come in probably in 11th, Neil. The, the more the field spreads, the worse it gets. He stopped on lap number 16. He was amongst the latter stoppers. It was a great pit stop and they vaulted Pro Drive. And now he converts with 150 points. Fabian Coulthard is the winner of race number 17. 
tough day for one side of the engineering bunker for car 17, but a great day for Phil Key and for Fabian Coulthard. Victory for them in Sydney. McLaughlin crosses the line second, but carries a 15 second penalty. Then it's Mostert, then Wind Cup. Shane Van Gisbergen after contact down at turn two, finishes in 15th position. 15th position for the Giz. Uh, give him 60 points exactly. Yep. And McLaughlin will finish 10th. So that's an amazing comeback based on those numbers. Fabian, what a great drive. His fourth win of the year. He was oh, able mate, to so take advantage. I mean, we're probably not doing big burnouts, just little skids, but um, <laughs> on the way in, you just come into pit, um, just come into pit, mate, and continue down to the end there, mate. So. Nice drive, good strategy, good pit stop. As you said, it was a great jump of Mark Winterbottom, wasn't it? And did everything right? Yep. Didn't get involved in any nonsense. No aggro. Car yep. straight. So 150 points straight into the bank. A couple of witness marks on the doors here and there. That was a pretty wild race, wasn't it? It was wild on the restart, wasn't it? There'll be a lot of conjecture about that. The rule, as you read it out, is that you can overlap as long as you don't pass that car before the control line. The only thing, and it's sometimes hard because of all of the comms that we've got in both ears in here, but I usually pick it up on the race management channel when the green flag call is gone, but sometimes it's hard to pick up the difference between the race management channel and the call versus the call from teams. Yeah. The only thing that could be argued is just at the correct point of the jump. So, um, yeah, that's, that's a good point. So anyway, that'll get resolved by people that have got uh, the benefit to scour the data. So it just, I'll go through that again. It's permitted to overlap prior to the control line, but only after the apex of the final turn, turn or another turn nominated by the race director and provided the green flags have been displayed. Now, to the best of our knowledge, they had been. And I'm just looking out the front of our commentary box here at the moment. Man, there's some battered cars out there at the moment. There sure is. And the other part that we didn't pick up on there is because of the penalty for this man, for Scott McLaughlin, who does move there to 10th, to be confirmed there on our timing. Wink Cup jumps onto the podium as a consequence of that finish. So an extraordinary job by Jamie and the team to coax him home. Very good points haul as a consequence. And 10th scapey for Scott McLaughlin gives him 78 points. And 15th for Van Gisbergen uh, ends up being the 60 points that I spoke about. But let's focus on a positive drive and a great run this afternoon. Well done, Fabian Coulthard, 150 points. Well done, Shell V Power Racing. And that was nice work from Fabian. Career victory number nine for him. And he's still well and truly in this game. Came into the round this weekend third in the points, 233 points down, and he just closed up some of that margin on board now with Shane Van Gisbergen. Now, is Scott coming down to talk to Shane, or is he going down to the podium as part of the team protocol? Both. Hi. Craig? Scotty. Let's grab uh, Scotty Miller. He's come down there. Scott. We'll just, uh, he's going to congratulate uh, Fabian Coulthard on the win. He came straight down and apologised to Shane about uh, obviously what happened down there at Turn 2. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, what can I say? It's uh, absolute uh, balls up on my, my behalf. And, uh, yeah, sorry to him and his team. I saw Jamie got damaged too. So not the way I want to do it. But, um, yeah, glad for Shelby Power Racing to at least get a win. I'm, yeah, again, sorry to everyone at home. And, uh, yeah. Sorry, it's on my, not my style. Can you just tell us about that restart? Obviously, he got alongside you pretty early on in the piece. Yeah, yeah I just got caught sleeping. And, uh, yeah, I got to look at a lot of stuff for myself tonight. It wasn't the best race for my behalf. But, uh, yeah, sorry again to Shane. My fault, and uh, we'll move on tomorrow. OK, thanks. Man. Thanks. Well That's said. Uh, well said, and uh, it takes a big man to stand up and say, you know what, I got that wrong. And he marched straight down there and said, I apologise. And like you said before, I don't see that there was any way of mitigating that. He just ended up in the left rear corner. And the most telling thing was that we heard the throttle get picked up in the secondary contact. The first contact sometimes you can get away with. The second part of it, he actually grabbed the throttle and got the left rear corner of it, Rihanna. Fabian Coulthard, congratulations. Back in the Virgin Australia victory lane. Brilliant result for your team. Yeah, wrap for the boys. You know, they gave me a good pit stop and... Uh sort of kept out of trouble but sort of all unfolded in front of me so unlucky for Scotty I'm not 100% sure what happened but you know we'll take it 
You're absolutely still in this championship fight. There's a huge amount of points still remaining. Important days are these days. It is. It's right. And uh, there's lots of water to pass under the bridge yet, so you can't get disillusioned by anything. So, you know, I've got a great crew, you know, good boys. I've got a fast car, so uh, there's plenty to play for. Enjoy those celebrations on the podium, Fabian. Chaz Mostert, you had a brilliant drive at last time out at Queensland Raceway and you find yourself back on the podium once again. Congratulations. Yeah, I think it was a little bit of a lucky dip down there too, but um, had a good line. Everyone went the outside, I went the inside and um, yeah, got some positions. But car, you know, we got a little bit of work to do tonight. It probably wasn't as quick as the guys next to us. Um, but, you know, I don't know how we got on the podium, but I'm absolutely stoked to spray some champagne today and then give the boys a, a second place trophy. It was a wild race, that's for sure. If we, t if we uh, look behind us, that your car, Super Chief Auto Racer, is looking fairly secondhand. Yeah, I was struggling for a bit of turn, so maybe that might have helped a bit of aero. But, uh, yeah, it was pretty tough out there. Enjoy the celebrations on the podium, Chaz. Well done. Jamie Winkup. It's pretty loud down here, isn't it? It is loud down yeah. here. Uh, wow, what a race. I don't really know what you want to say, but um, car's looking secondhand, but you're on the podium and important points. Yeah, car 88's definitely looked better than what it has now. Um, it doesn't go too good down the straight with the with a speed hump at the front, but um, we, hey, in some way, I, you know, we, if we had had a clean run, we probably had a chance to win that race. But um, on the other hand, we should have been sitting in the pits with a DNF. So um, chalk and cheese, very 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 happy. What was the visibility like for you looking over <laughs> over that bump? Were they were they did they show any on board? Were, were people laughing at me? I couldn't see a thing. I was actually just trying to see over the bonnet. I was running off the track. A little bit dodgy in a way, but um, got there, wrapped to be on the podium with, uh, with with what went on. You must be surprised, though, that you managed to finish the race. I mean, I'm sure that the team was yelling at you for your engine temperatures and all sorts of things. Yeah, temp was up, but the tyre, you know, just if the tyre, the tyre, good chance that the thing was going to let go. But uh, it was my day. It hung on. Give me some good points. Well done. Enjoy. Thank you. Yeah. We're just looking at, can't believe Jamie Winkup's car finished, but Shane Van Gisberg, and your race was uh, pretty eventful. Uh, that overlap at the start, at the restart, was the key to you getting up the inside of Scott. Yeah, I saw the green flag come, so I, I took the pay, took beside him, didn't pass him before the line, and yeah, it was an awesome battle. Like, the race was going really well. Enjoyed it with Frosty at the start, yeah. but um, yeah, got, got in front of Scotty, and then he's hit me once, and I tried to correct it, then he's finished me off, but... Um, to his credit, he was straight here, apologising, all good, we'll box on, but um, yeah, the finger for me, he only got 15 seconds for it and we're up the back, but um, bigger people than me make those decisions. Were you surprised that you were able to get that overlap on it? Uh, yeah, yeah, well they called the safety car really late, so I, I had it in my head and then as soon as I saw the green, I, I pulled out and um, yeah, it, it was a pretty cool battle down the straight and, and in through, so we had really good car speed and, and I was hoping to battle it out with him, but um, yeah, not to be. Okay, mate, see you tomorrow. Oh yeah, hope so. What an afternoon for us at Sydney Motorsport Park. Race 17 of the championship will run to keep everybody talking for quite some time. Unofficial results for you. Fabian Coulthard, the winner by 3.9 seconds over Chaz Mostert. Jamie Winkup, what a performance to get that thing home. He gets 129 points for his trouble. It was well worth staying out there. Looking further down the order for McLaughlin, that's 78 points for him in 10th position. And Shane Van Gisbergen, who you just heard from, in 15th position, gets 60 points for his trouble. But there's going to be a lot of discussion about what's happened here this afternoon. But right now, it's time to celebrate a great drive by Fabian Coulthard. Ladies and gentlemen, let's introduce our winning drivers for race 17. The 2017 Virgin Australia Supercars Championship Red Rooster Sydney Super Sprint. Making a welcome return to the top of the podium. Delighted about it from Shell V Power Racing, Fabian Coulthard. Second position today from the Super Cheap Auto Racing Squad, Chaz Mostert. Car was battered and bruised, but third place today from the Red Bull Holden Racing Team, Jamie Wincup. Representing our winning team, Car 12's data engineer from Shell V Power Racing, Brad Eyes. Now to present the winning trophies for race 17 of the season. Third place, courtesy of Mr. Glenn Matthews, Chief Executive Officer of the Australian Racing Drivers Club. Our second place trophy, courtesy of Vanessa Hicks, Director of Human Resources, Vodafone Australia. The winning team trophy from Sarah Rosales, National Marketing Manager, Hino Motor Sales Australia. And our first place trophy this afternoon comes courtesy of the Chief Information Officer from Red Rooster, Mr. Michael Schofield.
What a day at Sydney Motorsport Park. Ladies and gentlemen, we present your 2017 Virgin Australia Supercars Championship Red Rooster Sydney Super Sprint Race 17 Podium. And now for the celebrations. Great job, Fabian Coulthard. Was able to make a profit out of all of the other dramas that were going on this afternoon. 150 points for his trouble and uh, he couldn't care less about all of the other things that were going on in and around that racetrack. Plenty of things to talk about going into the evening and it sets up a fascinating 200 kilometre race for us tomorrow. We saw strategy plays and we saw a lot of battling on the racetrack. Championship leader is still Scotty McLaughlin and uh, you can see the car parked there next to the Virgin Australia Championship leaderboard but all that went on this afternoon's had a compression effect because it's just 78 points between McLaughlin and Wind Cup, 161 points behind for Coulthard. Highlights now, race number 17 of our championship. It seems a long time ago that they leapt away from the line and it was a wonderful start by Mark Winterbottom in the Botlow Ford Falcon. Swept across the pole sitter and then went back to the ideal racing line. It was on in the mid-pack though and unfortunately for Will Davison and for Jason Bryant they tangled with James Courtney down there and for Will in car number 95 this weekend he ended up going wide. It was deemed a racing incident. Wind Cup's first couple of laps were pretty wild. He spent at least two of the corners with two or four wheels off in the grass. Now they pitted McLaughlin early figuring that they'd get a benefit of the undercut. And Gisbergen and in also car number 97 but you can see that they had the gain already at Shell V Power Racing when they came back out. Shane locked up heavily. Left front cold tyre on the run into turn two for him. This was important and pivotal for what ultimately turned out to be a victory for Fabian Coulthard. He got out in front of Mark Winterbottom. Todd Kelly had a tyre failure, ripped the guard off and all of the debris that was deposited on the racetrack triggered the Vodafone safety car. The restart was wild. We had contact between McLaughlin and Van Gisbergen. Shane got down the inside, did it all legally and then when they got down to turn two, Initial contact, no big deal, but the second part of that brought him undone, and then that triggered a big nose-to-tail incident down the field as well. Rotated the race leader who dropped down the order. Big damage front and rear for David Reynolds, big damage for Jamie Wincup. How they managed to survive that was something of a miracle, and understand it was a 129-point yield for Wincup by soldiering on out there, managing temperatures, and he did it unsighted, as he told Rihanna a little bit earlier. So with extra tyre grip on his side, he pitted six laps later than car number 17. He put it to good use. And Fabian Coulthard was able to close the deal and move on to nine championship race wins. He's the winner of race number 17.